I've been making some jewellery holders for rings and necklaces and today I'm going to share with you how to make them. So you're going to need some clay, so I'm going to be using porcelain but you could use any clay such as stoneware or earthenware. You're also going to need a small bowl and just some different size cookie cutters and that's it. That's all you need to make these ring holders. You go forwards and backwards with the rolling pin. You need to get this porcelain as thin as you possibly can. It's very, very, very thin. Look. Just, just very lightly. So just take in a rubber kidney tool. Oops. And then that's why you do need to be very careful. Because at this stage, oops, it is very, very thin. So that's not a problem. It was just a little mistake. Mistakes happen when you're working with clay. Just use different size cookie cutters. I'm just going to cut these out into little discs. So this at this point is is so thin but that's what we want that's what we're going for so I just keep rolling and getting that getting this as thin as you can get it okay then the next thing is you can either get um, a small bowl I'm going to be using this. This is a plaster mould. It's a plaster mould of a tea light holder that I've made, but it's great for making these little jewellery holders. So you just want to press in. you'll get a lovely unique shape but I know not everyone's going to have something like this so just get a bowl so you're all going to have something like this lying around the house um, and then with this one just press down same technique and then just pinch the sides in a little bit so we're just trying to get I suppose a wavy pattern into the sides and then I'd leave that in there for about um I'd probably say about just 10 minutes and because the porcelain is so thin it's going to dry or it's going to get to um it's going to get to the leather hard stage very quickly you could drape it over the cookie cutter that could work too you'd get a different shape hold on let's just pop it inside oh this is different oh that could work too oh yeah you could just do that. You could just lay it on top of your cookie cutter. You need to be a little bit careful there because I can see teeny tiny um, rip. I'm just going to fold that back together and pinch it. And I'll leave that for now. If I get a little spray of water, I'll be able to fix that easy. 
a little bit of water on the brush just to fix that tiny little teeny tiny tear and that's it so there's another thing you could use you could just use your cookie cutter so another thing you can do is scroll this little piece out here and add if you've got um, a little butterfly cutter this has been drying for about 10 minutes let's pop it out and I'm going to take the large one out of here just give it a little tap done <laughs> it's not coming so I'm just going to lift it out lift, 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 lift decoration lots of different types of techniques I think I'm just going to use some transfers on a few of them and what I do like to do is let them dry off, put them in for a bit of firing and then come out and do some illustrations. So see this as your base and then you can see how each one is very different. These are underglaze transfers and I got these from Elan Transfers. I think it'll look nice just popped popped in there and leave that for a couple of minutes okay so let's do a big reveal oh. I'm gonna put this butterfly on here. So let's just see where to put this. Where to put it, where to put it. I think there. So I'm going to score. load of slip on there well, there we go so these are all dry we're going for a bit of fire in and then I'll add some illustrations to the other pieces I think they look really lovely. The jewellery holders have had a bis firing and I put them on at a thousand degrees Celsius. So they've turned out really cute, really lovely. And um, so the next stage is to glaze them. I'm just going to use some black underglaze. So this is a black one from Speedball. So the first one I'm going to do is this one. I'm just going to put a transparent glaze over it. I think it's lovely enough. And remember that I use the um, underglaze transfers for this really lovely, really pretty illustration. And I think that's just enough for it. I think just whacking um, a transparent glaze over the top, I'll probably do um, about three layers and that'll be enough. So just going for a three layer on here I'll go over the illustration I'm going to go around the edge as well just in case at any point I might want to add some luster I'm going to use a different method to decorate the butterfly I'm using black underglaze to paint the butterfly I'll give it two coats I'll then use some of the underglaze to paint a wild flower illustration into the main area. I'm 
My final method of decoration is to draw an illustration onto the jewellery holder using an ordinary pencil. I fill the bunny bodies using the same black underglaze as used on the butterfly. This also gets two coats. Once dry, all items get two coats of clear underglaze before being glazed fired. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to make a jewellery holder. If you've liked this video and want to see more videos then check out the one that I've done on how to make earrings and I've also done one on how to make a necklace. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.